going on guys? Today's video, we're gonna be working on this Dodge Ram 1500 SST with the Hemi Swap. So if you guys have been following along with the build, we have been well underway. We've made engine mounts, we've got the engine sitting in here, and I'm happy with the positioning of this. Side note, if you guys are interested in doing something like this, hit me up for engine mounts. I have a set of engine mounts that I'm selling discounted actually. I technically have two sets because I've moved this thing around, but they will all work. So hit me up if you're interested in that. I'll get you hooked up. But she's in here, she's good. We also painted the engine bay. So if you guys haven't seen that, we got the engine bay all freshened up and we painted the frame and getting this chassis prepared. We also went to the junkyard and we got a new tank or new used tank. This one is in excellent shape. Painted the tank straps because they were a little bit uh, crusty looking. And now we are getting to the part where we can start doing some fun stuff. So we're gonna be jumping around just a little bit, you guys, because I'm kind of ordering parts and waiting for parts to arrive. But I wanna start getting into the plumbing aspect of this. So we're gonna start getting going on that today. I'll show you guys this in just a second. So we're gonna be working on the fuel system. I'm still getting some parts in order. We are gonna be running Holly EFI on this thing. So I've got a lot of the stuff for that. But again, as we get into all this stuff, I will fill you guys in on the details. So what we're gonna do now is get the tank hanging and then we can go ahead and get this super trick Holly drop-in fuel pump. So I will link this down for you guys if you guys are doing something like this or if you guys have one of these trucks, you can get a Holly high flow pump and it is straight drop-in on these trucks. So we're also running one on the Dakota and we are also running one of these on the Hellcat Swap Ram. So here she is, you guys. This is a really, really nice unit. Uh, I've used these before, as I mentioned, and you can run returnless or return style. So it's set up right now the same way as the factory system would have been on this vehicle. You can see here, it's got the fuel pressure regulator here. It's in tank, so what it does is Fuel comes out of your fuel pump, it pressurizes, this bleeds off any additional fuel pressure into the tank and it leaves you with regulated fuel pressure and fuel coming out of this port right here. So she's all good to go. Also comes with your fuel level sensor as well and the arm and not only that, but it comes with a hydromat. If you guys haven't seen these, go look it up. These are incredible. This thing, essentially, you could dip it in fuel like this and it would still have fuel pressure. So super cool that it has this. This will go the length of the tank. It's got a new gasket for us. And all we need to do is just use our existing locking collar on the top of the tank and it will fit right in. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this tank installed and then we can get to putting the fuel pump in and then we can start to getting to our plumbing and we have Earl's fittings to get all the plumbing done as well as our Earl's high flow fuel filter. So one thing is I am waiting for the mounting brackets, but we can get an approximate position for this on where we want to mount it. Probably set the cab back down, make sure we're not going to interfere with anything and uh, plan our route. you guys so tank is in and i cannot get over how clean everything looks i'm sure it's coming across on the video but comment down below what you guys think is it coming through clean on the camera or is it just look a lot cleaner in person but let me know down in the comments below so here we go here's the pump i'm gonna go ahead and get this situated there really isn't a whole lot to assemble which is nice the pump's all ready to go i'll double check everything as far as our clamps but uh, the boys at holly always have that stuff handled for us but other than that really you just put the sock on so we're gonna put our hydro mat on there and then i gotta put the fuel level float on there so that just clicks in and then we can drop the pump assembly in with our new gasket and then the wiring we're gonna handle afterwards once we get our holly efi all that good stuff then we can wire everything up so that will be after we get the plumbing done then we can move on to electrical so let me go ahead and put this sock on here and get this thing in there okay so we've got the sock on we've got our float on what we're gonna do now is take our tape measure and what you want to do is take something relative so from the bottom of your tank i like to go to the edge here of this lip where the pump is going to sit and you want to make sure because you can adjust this pump so you can see here the two arms here we want to lower this so that this sock is on the bottom of our tank that way 
if you do happen to run low on fuel that you're actually able to pick up fuel from the bottom so i've measured it we can actually extend this down just a little bit and then that way this sock is going to be right on the bottom so on this tank we're about 13 and three quarter inches to this lip here and if we go over here th same thing to the lip we're about 13 so we can extend this down about three quarters of an inch just to give us a little bit more depth. So what I'm gonna do, it's as simple as grabbing this, we're gonna loosen off these Allen head screws here on both sides. With these loose, you can see our pump can now slide. So what we're gonna do is measure it out. So we're gonna go like this, 13 and three quarters. And then we can set our screws in place. Okay, so now we're over here, gasket. And then we can drop in our pump and test fit everything. Here we go. Gasket in place. place man check that out you guys it just fits so nice it's almost <laughs> it's almost a sin putting this yellow locking ring on it i guess we could get a new one not that it really makes a difference but this will go on i'll we'll go ahead and tighten this down and we can put in our fitting here to go to our line which is going to run up the rail okay so this is the fun part for me at least you guys so you get to figure out what fittings you want to use and it's a uh, completely up to you guys so i've got a swivel 90 coming out of here and that is this part number right here so i'll link this down in the description for you guys so this goes into my dash 8 then i've got a dash 8 straight fitting and what i'm going to do is come out of here i'm going to loop it down i'm going to tuck it into the frame rail here we're going to come across and then i'm going to put my fuel filter inside the frame rail so it's protected before coming back out I'm gonna run right here where the factory fuel lines were. We're gonna come over here, cross over the top, and also the 6.4 and the 5.7, the fuel line is located on opposite sides. So on the 5.7, it's on the driver side. On the 6.4 intake manifold, it's on the passenger side. So I'm gonna leave myself enough room that if I wanna put it on this side or this side, that I can have the option, just in case we run either intake manifold, and uh, that'll be that. So. Over here, I've got our Mr. Gasket Dash 8 braided hose. I've been using this stuff on all of our builds, you guys, on the Hell Coda, on the Hell Ram, bigger fuel systems. We did Dash 10 on that stuff because it's more horsepower, but Dash 8 still plenty sufficient. So I'm gonna go ahead, start making up my fuel lines, start putting some Dash 8s on this, and then we can route this. So we use our Earl's wrenches and if you guys haven't used these aluminum wrenches, they do not make a single mark on your fittings, which is obviously a good benefit. If you use steel ones, it'll literally just chew them up. So we've got our fitting on and we will be flushing this out before we finally install it on the vehicle. But for now, let's go ahead, throw it on, measure it to length to where our fuel filter is gonna go and then we can cut it again and we can install another Dash 8 fitting. All right, so I've got this mapped out. So the fuel filter is gonna sit right about here. And once the brackets show up, I will mount that, but I wanna put it here, that way it's far enough back. And when I come through here, I have enough space so that I can nicely and gradually alter my fuel line and keep it here with the factory fuel lines and keep it here with the factory fuel lines all in check. I'm gonna leave the original one just in case because everybody is so gung-ho about not messing with this SST since uh, she's a pretty clean unit at this point. I think we can all safely agree there. But I'm going to leave that in case anybody ever wants to go back stock. 
then uh, you know those lines are there. So right where this yellow tape is, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, and then I'm gonna attach my dash eight fitting, and then we can go ahead and make our next line from here, carry it forward, and then once the other fittings show up, then we can trim that one. So we've got our hose with our two ends. Now on the other side, we'll put one more end on. And that way we have our hose. We can kind of dress it in and wait for those other parts to arrive. Okay, so we got this line made up. We've got this one now made up. We haven't cut this to length yet, but let's go ahead, throw it in there and get a rough idea where we want to place everything. Okay, so we've got this tied in. Not sure how that's gonna loop around. I wanted to give myself a little bit of room so that when we get these brackets, if I need to go forward or back, that uh, I'm not cutting it too close here, but I think this gives a nice gradual loop in here. Comes around, tucks in nicely here. This will mount there. And then this, we're gonna fasten up along here. And then the original factory line crossed over here. So whether we cross over here, a little bit further up, either way, it's gonna come over across same way the actual fourth gen ram is uh ran as well ram ran and then over here like i said i'm gonna give myself enough room to either go here or on the passenger side depending on which intake manifold we use for the different fuel rail setup and uh we're making some good progress boys other thing too is the drive shaft does fit only thing is i'm probably gonna have to get it customized it will actually fit but it's uh sticking out of the tail shaft just a little bit too much it'd be enough to operate it move it around you know maybe go on a slow drive but anything high speed we're definitely going to want more engagement so i will have to lengthen the drive shaft but it will function enough just to be able to put around see if this transmission is even any good if it's not we have an eight speed over there ready to go boys but <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there see exactly what we want to put in here i just really curious to see how that transmission is if it's in decent shape whatever we'll figure it out when we cross that bridge all right i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the drive shaft and what i mean by that and then i'm gonna put the cab back on because in the morning i actually have to switch to that project which i will have a separate video on we are upgrading the fuel system on the hellcat swapped ram 1500 but for this video we'll stick on this project All right, so I don't have it fully seated in here, but definitely would need a new universal joint. But this is what I was saying. So the overall shaft is probably about that long, but we need this slip to be in. Probably it would be, in, you know, another couple inches further in would be uh, ideal, I think. But it is engaged at least. And there is a fisheye on this lens, but you can see our whole alignment. Everything is looking beautiful, you guys. So like I said, there is a fish eye on this lens, so it probably bends things a little bit, but I'm sure you guys can tell from here, that looks beautiful. So everything's lined up. Like I said, we're making some real good progress here. So I'm gonna drop this down so that I can work on that for a separate video for you guys. And then once the rest of the parts show up, then we will get back onto this fuel system. All right, so cab's back on. Another few days, we should have some more parts and we can continue working on this thing. All right, guys, well, it's been a few days and the boys at Holly sent us the rest of the parts that we needed. So I've been working on a bunch of other things kind of behind the scenes and also filming future episodes because I want to keep this whole build series very specific. So anyways, I can't remember. I think the cab was off it last time, but Anyways, cab is back down on it, engine is in place, and I put the intake manifold on because we still have to cut 
our fuel line to length but we've got the fittings over here so let me go ahead and show you also before i walk away too much i am testing out some different headers for you guys i will let you guys know if these become available but we've got two hooker blackheart headers in here and they fit beautifully so i had to do some experimentation but got that situated so that's going to be awesome we're good to go there we've got the exhaust also some other parts showed up too so let's see what's all in here i have not opened this yet as you can probably tell by the huge amounts of bubble wrap. Okay, so we got some V-band clamps. That's gonna be for our exhaust. Lots and lots of stuff, you guys. Flowmaster, you guys already know. If you guys have or haven't heard our Hellcat Swap Ram 1500, it sounds absolutely incredible. And I was so happy with the results on that that we got the same muffler for this vehicle as well. So it's gonna sound spicy. Uh, what is this one? So let's see what's in here. Gen 3 Hemi VVT. Oh, okay, so this here is gonna be for our Terminator X. We'll get into that later. This is gonna control our variable runners on the intake manifold, so that's the harness for that, if you're wondering what that box is. We've got a million fittings so that we can get this situated. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing because I think my buddy at Holly's making a point of how many fittings he's giving me so that I don't have to bug him again. Um, anyways, here is the fitting that goes on to the fuel rail. So this is what we needed as well. So this is a fitting that we needed from Earl's. This connects to our factory fuel rail, converts it to a dash eight. Also has a little service port there so we can plug in anything we want. If we want to do fuel pressure, any of that kind of stuff, it's got a little uh eighth inch npt so more v-bands it looks like so we've got all that but this was the ticket that we really needed was this guy and let's go ahead and get to work oh this white box kind of blended in with the rest of the white boxes which i thought were v-bands but this was actually crucial for us to get this is our brackets for our fuel filter so we've got the billet aluminum brackets now we can mount our fuel filter and get everything plumbed so let's go ahead throw this thing back up get underneath it i'm gonna get the fuel filter mounted once i get that mounted then we can continue on okay so i've got our filter mounted here and i think i'm just gonna use one bracket because we're gonna have the hose supported on either side and uh, it seems to work a little bit better in this situation. So there's one existing hole here. I just put it through, put a nut on the backside. All I gotta do is drill one hole right up above, and then I'm gonna try to get rid of the original fuel line. I was gonna maybe leave it there, but it's kinda getting in my way a bit. Um, in case anybody ever wanted to return this truck back to stock, I was thinking of leaving it, but I might get rid of it or tuck it out of the way. But I'm gonna drill one hole up here, and then we'll be able to mount this filter. She'll be nice and straight there, and then we can continue on with our hose. Okay, so this is the routing we're gonna take, and I'm gonna also go, this is the factory routing, you guys. It crosses over right here. That's where that disconnect was, because I was thinking of taking it through there, but it's gonna get way too close to the exhaust. And we also have our shift linkage, if we do retain the 727, so the shift linkage comes across there, so I can't like go a straight path through there. So I'm gonna keep the factory location and then we'll end up putting some heat protectant over through this section where it gets close to the exhaust, but we'll do that later. So now let's go, let's put the truck back down and we are going to measure that line, cut it, and that way we can have this finalized. Okay, so the truck is back down on the ground. We've got this awesome billet piece from Earl's, let me step in here so I can get a little closer. And we're gonna go ahead and put this on here so this will click right on. Again, the 5.7 intake manifold, it's on this side, and the 6.4 is on the other side. You could run the factory line over, but I'm just gonna go straight here. That way we don't have any restrictions on our system. It's going right to the rail. So let me pop this off, I'll click this on. And this guy is just gonna click right onto here. There we go got the factory lock and then we can put our little latch on here super trick setup you guys well, there we go so she's on there now we've got our dash 8 here also like I said if we want since this doesn't have uh, a service port we could put a fuel pressure gauge here so we can see what our fuel pressure is 
but really, really cool setup. So then this, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this and it looks like probably for our application, we'll put a 90 on here. And I'm also going to make sure that it'll reach onto the other side for when we go 6.4 OEM intake manifold or whatever other combination we wanna try. Okay, so we're gonna use a 90 from Mr. Gasket. So here we go. We'll screw this on so we can get a rough idea for our length here. And this is gonna be pretty trick here, you guys. So that's how the 90 looks. I also have a 120, so let's take a look, see. That's kind of how the 90 would route. I guess that is pretty clean. Let's just see, just since we have it here, what the 120 would look like, see if it's more desirable. That's hard to say, you guys. That does look pretty decent. Okay, so here's the factory cover in place. I'm gonna say the 120 looks like the ticket, boys, because it kind of heads back down to the center of where everything is gonna run from. Mm, let's let me double check the length and see how she's gonna look on the other side. Okay, so this is where I need to cut it. So this, for whatever reason, the 6.4 intake manifold, the fuel connection is right here at the second bolt. So it's like right here versus our 5.7 is over there. So I'm just trying to make it so that it'll work for both because we will hopefully be playing with both setups because we do have, I don't know if I've showed you guys, if I already showed you guys once in this video, it's been days in between and uh, kind of a commotion everywhere. But yeah, so we have a brand new, 6.4 intake manifold shout out to whatever it takes transmission parts for sponsoring that intake for us so i know i've had that thing shelved for a while but shout out to the boys at whatever it takes because they have sponsored that and we need to get it on this 5.7 so i'm going to cut it here i'm going to put that 120 on it and then uh, we should be good to go we still have to flush out the lines but at least the lines will be made up so let's cut that and put on that 120. All right, it's the next day, you guys, and I took out the factory fuel line. I figured I might as well just get it in my way since it was getting in our way, and uh, we don't have any plans to run a Magnum anytime soon, but I will keep it since it's in good shape. So anyways, we are down here right now, and what I'm going to do is a couple things. One, I'm going to disconnect this and leave it disconnected here, and then we'll probably put just a splash of fuel in here, and rather than disconnecting the lines and flushing them out manually, I'll probably put a splash of fuel in here throw 12 volts on the pump and then just let the line flush out here once this line is clean i'll hook this back up hook the line to here after we finish it and then i'll you know leave it disconnected from the rail again put 12 volts on the pump and then it'll flush it from here all the way forward so it's just a little nicer way of flushing the lines out and then what i'm messing with right now is i'm going to drill a hole right here for our clamp because i don't want my fuel line ever falling down onto the exhaust so i'm going to put this clamp, this rubber stainless steel, but uh, rubber coated clamp right here. That way it holds our fuel line real nice. Um, I probably will put one, probably put another one over here, but I can use one of the pre-existing bolts. So I can either fasten it to the line. You can see here I've got a tie wrap here and it's gonna be fastened here. So it's probably not gonna go anywhere here, but at least want this one to keep it up out of the way. So I'll drill the hole. And then if you guys have or haven't seen, I'm gonna put one of these uh, rib certs, nut certs, whatever. Everybody calls them a few different things. But I'm gonna put one of these. We're gonna use a six mil. We'll drill the hole, put in our insert, and then uh, we'll be able to put that anchor there. So let's get it done. Okay, so check it out. Got that one over there mounted, and I put one more here just to make sure it doesn't get on this frame rail here. So comes through here. Also, I haven't tightened this down, by the way. It's just chilling here, so that'll come through there real nice. And like I said, it doesn't get into anything. There's actually a factory like rubber or plastic shield here. So tighten down our bracket, tighten down our two fittings on our filter. Gonna leave this off so that we can flush it out to here. And I'm gonna go up top. I still haven't cut the actual fuel line and put the last fitting on because I kind of wanted to get this just a little more dressed in. I was gonna wing it, but I figured I might as well just dress it in as good as possible before I uh, 
trim off the end of it and cut it to length. So let's put this thing down, let's cut it to length, and let's flush out those lines. Okay, so we got the air saw. I was originally gonna take the whole line off, but I'm just gonna do it right here because it's one fitting and uh, it's dash eight, it's not that hard. Dash 10 and up starts to get a little more difficult, but dash eight, I can just do it right here. And like I said, I'm gonna flush the line out so that we don't have to take it all back off again. So I'm gonna cut it right there, there's my mark. And then we'll put our fitting on there. We got the Earls. Now we'll put this 120 on here and then we can see how she looks. All right, there we go. We've got that 120 on there and I actually took off the quick disconnect because I had to put a little bit of high temp thread sealant. So I want to flush out all the way through just in case a little bit of the thread sealant, you know, got in here. I don't want it getting stuck in my injector. So there we go. That's ready to flush out, but we're going to do the first section first. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put some gas in the tank. The tank is completely empty at this point. So I'm going to take off the tape, put some gas in it. I got the battery way over there. I got the leads far enough to get away from the tank. So I got my red, my black, that'll get my pump going over there. Put some fuel in. All right, well, probably have about three and a half, four gallons in it. I had that thing full and this was completely empty. So it should be enough. I know it's a really long tank, but hopefully it'll be enough to You'll see down there, I've got our bucket and then I disconnected the line. So this is a straight line from here to there. And then I'm gonna give it some power and we shall see some fuel come out hopefully. definitely flows a lot. <laughs> I think that should be enough to clean out the line. It's where we like put a gallon through it in that short period of time. So let's go ahead. We're going to put the vehicle up. We'll connect that to the filter, connect our other line, and then we can flush out the second half of the line. <laughs> Okay, truck is up, so here we go. That's where we just drained from. I'm gonna connect this to the filter, connect this line tight, and then we'll go to the front. Okay, there we go. Everything's on, good, tight, looking good. I even tightened down these just for fun, even though probably gonna have to loosen them once we get our heat shielding through there as well. So that looks all good and dandy. Um, like I said, I'm probably gonna have to, I'll probably put this underneath that as well so that that is fastened there. Um, or put a tie wrap, something of that nature, but it is anchored here as well. So let's go ahead, we'll put this back down and let's flush this thing out all the way through to the front. All right, so there we go. I've got the fuel line here. And if you're wondering why it's so long, it's cause it's just like hanging right with the exhaust. Whereas my routing comes around and stays clear of everything. So that's why it's making it to the front of the engine. But I'm gonna have this right here. So let's go ahead, put 12 volts on and we'll let this part of the line flush out as well. Dang, son. It's a lot of fuel for a 5.7. Gonna have to add some boost. So I'll flush it out a couple more times just uh, to be sure, and we should be good to go. All right, I think that ought to do it. That's a lot of fuel. Okay, so last thing that we need to do is, this is the Holly pump, and they have their own very nice connector here, but it is a Holly connector, and they give you tons of length of wire to do what you wish with it. What I'm gonna do actually, you can see here somebody hack jobbed this before, so this is previous owner stuff. They tapped into the two wires for the fuel pump. So what I'm gonna do is take this out, clean that back up, get rid of these crappy leads. But when I got this tank, I actually got super lucky. So this was the original, I guess, harness right here. And it had the fuel pump module on it when I got this tank. And it had this adapter for the newer, I think, style fuel pump. 
So nicely enough, this will click right into here. And again, I didn't plan this, but it just happened to be so. So this will click into here. I'm gonna cut off these wires for this other style plug. And then I'm gonna solder the four connections here. So you can see there, we got four wires. Two are for the fuel pump, two are for our fuel level sense. So it, you know how much fuel we have in the tank. So there you go, four wires, so the two yellows the black, the red, and then we have a plug and play situation. So that way it's disconnected. We don't have to hack up any of the factory wiring. That'll bring us our fuel pump wires and our fuel level indicator wires to the front already on factory wiring. So let me go ahead and cut this, solder it, heat shrink it, get rid of these crappy wires, and I'll show you guys what I end up with. Hey guys, so I repaired the wire there, so we're back to stock. And then I went ahead and made up my jumper harness, so this will plug directly into here, and plugs also into there. And then that gives us our connection. So I'm gonna go ahead, connect it in, show you guys. And there we have it, you guys. So I went ahead and I put a little bit of wire loom on there with our factory looking tape. So everything looks like factory. We got that OEM plus look going on. And now our fuel system is complete, you guys. All right, so that's gonna be a wrap for this video. I wanted to keep this video specific to the fuel system on this truck. So now we have the fuel tank in, our fuel pump module, our fuel lines are ran, and we are all good to go on the fuel system. So next up, we're gonna be working on the electronics, getting that Holly EFI. We have the Terminator X Max going in with the complete plug-in play system for one of these Gen 3 Hemis. So I'm super excited to get working on that because that's gonna be something new for us on the channel, new for me, but it's gonna be a lot of fun and it is self-tuning. So once we plug everything in, this thing is gonna tune itself. We can obviously dial it in, but for the most part, the Holly EFI is gonna do the work and it's gonna be cool. If you guys have ever heard the rev limiter on one of those Holly EFIs, this thing is going to sound nuts. So. Super excited for that. All the products that we use in today's video will be down in the description below where you can find the stuff to do the same thing if you have one of these trucks. So check those links out down below. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Check out the other videos on the channel to see how we got to this point. We'll see you guys on the next video.